Hi people, today I'm bringing to you the second book in the Nevermore series and I have to say that these books are amazing. They're written by Jessica Thompson and this one is Wondersmith, The Calling of Morgan Crow. And I have to say that I completely love this one. Uh, it took me a bit to get into the book because um, I had read the first one not so long ago, like a month or so. And the first pages in this one are like this remember what happened in the first one and I was like I remember because I read it <laughs> you know but uh, I appreciate I love actually when authors do these things that makes um, you know it's like what happened in the first book or in the one before that it's that that and that and I like that a lot because sometimes it takes like a year before the following book gets published so when I began reading if they don't do this remember <laughs> thing um Sometimes I get completely lost because I don't remember exactly what happened. So I love that she did that in this book. And I love that we get to see more of Morgan's journey. I'm very excited. There is uh, The third book is already out. It came out in March in 2020. And I have to say, it, uh, I read somewhere that she is going to be working in three more never book, never never more books. So you have to say that I'm very excited because I love this bunch of people. Here we are going to see Morrigan as she begins her education into the Woonstock school and uh, I'm not going to make any spoilers about the book so you know and I did love how she feels like this elation that things are actually working her way that she's going to be surrounded by people that are going to you know care about her and that she's going to have all those brothers and sisters that Jupiter told her in the first book and it's very hurtful when she arrives at the school and everyone sees her as this dangerous person, as this dangerous beast, because she hasn't done anything, but people are judging her with a knowing her just because she's a wondrous mate. And since uh, you have Ezra Squall, you know, uh, and he did those horrible things, they are not giving Morrigan any chance to prove herself. To show, to, to show the world that she can be different, that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what power you have or what ability you have, what it really matters is who you are. So she's going to be, you know, she's going to be judged in this very disgusting way and she's going to be, well, all her colleagues are going to be undergoing this cool, you know, teachings and they're going to to be going to different sections of the school she's going to be attending just one class with this professor who hates Wanda Smith so she's going to be feeling miserable dejected and she's going to find herself in that place she found her she found herself in the first book thinking that she you know that people don't see her like she is truly invisible like people see like through her and don't acknowledge her and uh, you know do, lots of things are going to happen and she's going to be acquiring like a second class where she's going to be enjoying herself loving what she's going to learn but you, you know I love this idea that the author has put in forward in this book about judging people not because of what they are but you know I love how she criticized that 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 idea of it's like judging a book by its cover, it's like judging a person by the color of their skin, it's by judging a person by whoever they love or like. So I love that she's putting that in this book that makes you think that you shan't judge people, that people aren't much more than whatever knack or whatever ability they have. So I love that you can empathize with Morrigan so much, that you feel her pain. And if you were a kid, that was bullied or that was told that they were less, I think that you're going to love this one. I do, I know that I do. Also, we're going to have like, uh, we're going to be following Morgan and her friends, as I said, but also we're going to have the, these disappearances. There is people with abilities. There is um, um, angels are disappearing, uh, even one Magnificat. It's, uh, and it looks like there is going to be this you know, this gasoline market kind of thing. It's like this oral legend. Uh, it's told that people with abilities were kidnapped from the streets and they were going to be sold. So it was like this scary tale that moms told her kids. You have to behave or you're going to end up in the gasoline market. And 
it seems that maybe some truth to that because you know I don't I'm not going to say much more about that. But I did love that we have um, these many things to follow. We have Morrigan, we have Jupiter that, as always, he is being called to solve things and he has to be you know absentee from the hotel and then Morrigan has to deal with things on her own. And I love that we also have these disappearances thing and this ghastly market and I do love that we get to know more about the city of Nevermore which is an amazing part of the book for me. Uh, the goal building that Jessica has created in this book is just completely amazing because when you think oh there is nothing more that can surprise me about this city it's all a lie because there's tons of things that are going to surprise you about this city and I love that uh, for me the city is uh, one of the characters of the book because I, I like it so much. I love learning the different secrets that the city has inside it. So it's amazing. I also love Fenestra and I love that we see much more of her and I love how cat she is and she remembers me of a cat I used to have. May she rest in peace and Every time that I see Fenestra, like with the gray fur, I think, no, she must be red golden because my cat was exactly like Fenestra, but, uh, you know, she was like a very long hired cat. She was an Angora cat. And yeah, it reminds me of her because, you know, she will purr and when you will say something that she didn't want to hear, she will show you her back and, purr, and it was amazing. So that's another thing that I love about these books. And yeah, this story is amazing. There's so many powerful messages inside this book about, as I say, not judging a person because you cannot know what they have inside them if you don't bother to, you know, to bridge the distance and talk with them and understand. Also, it's talk, there's talk about immigration here, about, you know, coming from another state and trying to make a better life or trying to learn something that you cannot learn where you're from or... And there's going to be characters who are going to be, you know, put in danger and put their families in danger if they are found out. And I love that this book also makes you think about that, about um, we are in a global world. So I don't understand why we still have this kind of frontiers and this kind of judgment of people without really knowing them. And I love that it reflects in that book. I also love the diversity we have. Lots of characters that come from every place in the world and it's amazing. And yeah, this story is a very powerful one. And I know that it's for young readers, but as you can see, <laughs> I'm outside that specter. Uh, but I have to say that I love this series because it's very fresh. And it's very... Sometimes when I read these books, I think that it's like fairy tales and... Uh, Disney movies and all of that, that you can see them when you're a kid and you see like one part of the message and one part of the story. But when you see them when you are older, you will like a different picture. And even you can criticize those things that you don't agree with. You know what I mean? It's like in Disney, all the princesses need to be saved and all of them need to be with a white prince. They cannot be with a black woman. Why not? I mean... So it looks like they're changing that with Frozen and that, but you know what I mean. And I love that we have this ability of revisit all memories. And I think that this book is amazing because uh, you can enjoy it while you're a kid and you can keep it with you and dread it as an adult or, you know, I mean, those books are amazing. And I really want to read the third one because... I need to know when more is going to happen. And I love that Ezra Squall, who is like the bad guy, it seems like he's going to be multi-layered. I mean, <laughs> I mean with that, that he's not bad per se. It looks like he has like lots of secrets inside him and that he's going to be an amazing antagonist character. He already is for me. And I wonder if we are going to learn more things about him. And I have this inkling inside of me that Jupiter and Ezra had this kind of relationship because they seem to, you know, to know each other. I don't know. Just pick these books up because they are completely amazing. Thank you for watching. Bye.